Mac Malone, he's your KC Jones. Mac Malone, he's your KC Jones. Mac Malone, he's your KC Jones. You know, get the best from that KC Jones. Let's go. The Missouri River, which is arguably the longest river in North America, has a mysterious and dark reputation. Since 1966, at least 77 known prostitutes, most of them linked to Independence Avenue, have been found in the Missouri River. The killing started in 1966 when the first acknowledged victim of the killer was pulled from the river. According to Kansas City Police, they still pull several bodies out of the river every year. When asked for a definitive number of victims, they replied and said it really is, was impossible to tell. The Missouri River is the ideal place to dispose of bodies because of its deep water, aggressive currents, and a lot of its banks and bridges are secluded. They provide the perfect place to commit the crime without being seen. By throwing the body in the water, it carries it completely out of the area. The water breaks down the corpse to the point where a lot of the times, only dental records can be used to identify the victim. When you really analyze this case, it becomes clear that this could only be the work of several different killers. Police had an idea of a suspect or two, but ultimately had no evidence and had made no arrest until a jailhouse informant came forward and said that Breeden had told him he killed Viola McCoy. Gregory Breeden was then brought up on murder charges, but the informant quit cooperating and prosecutors ended up dropping the charges. Now, Viola McCoy was the fourth victim that was connected to Breeden that was pulled from the river. She had her legs removed with surgical precision. Another victim, Melody Milliner, was also one of the first victims to be found mutilated in the same fashion. She had been stabbed nine times. All seven were connected to Breeden, and even though he denied killing them, he did admit to knowing them from the time that he spent on the avenue. Breeden did ten years in prison for writing bad checks. When he was incarcerated, his house near Houston Lake was demolished. Since this case was so old and the house had been torn down, I wasn't able to really get confirmation of the exact location of it. But I, however, did find a place in a park that he used to sleep in and stalk the prostitutes and his victims. I'm going to take you there now. So when Breeden got out of jail, after doing 10 years, they had demolished his house. So he kept driving all around the northeast in his van, the old wards building right there. And it said he used to sleep in this park behind the old wards building by the baseball fields. Now this has been gated off, but if you look down in here, is where he drove down, drove his van down in there and he parked and he slept right here in the park, the Northeast Athletic Field. Breeden ended up camping out in his van all over the Northeast area. Breeden had been on law enforcement's radar since 1982. No evidence was ever found, and whatever he did do, he ultimately got away with it. But in 2002, he was arrested again for soliciting a prostitute, and again in 2013 for sexual misconduct for exposing himself to children. I also had located the grave of Melody Milliner, but for some reason she wasn't listed on the directory at the cemetery, and the location was wrong on the Google Maps, so I couldn't find her. We drove an hour out, and I spent another hour and a half walking through the cemetery. But I did try to find that. I wasn't able to find that either. But one thing is for certain. Nobody was ever caught. And all signs point to multiple killers. So the question is, whatever happened to the infamous Avenue killers? Was Breeden really responsible? How many was he responsible for? From 1966 all the way up into 1997, there was a whole nother handful of bodies that turned up. Now, Breeden was only questioned for the ones from 84 to 92. So there were definitely more killers. Why do bodies keep turning up still? Who knows? Maybe it's that old man that lives across the hall from you. Maybe that old door greeter at Walmart might have a few secrets. Maybe it wasn't one man. Maybe it was many. Are they dead? Are they still alive? I mean, the fact is the Independence Avenue killer was never caught. He could still be out there. They could still be out there. <laughs> Everybody be safe until next time. This is Mac Malone signing out. Peace. Mac Malone.
Malone, he's your KC journalist. True. Mac Malone, he's your KC journalist. Mac Malone, he's your KC journalist. You not gonna get the best from that KC journalist.